Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a word. Hallelujah. 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 I was sitting over there a moment ago when the Lord spoke to my spirit and he said, My power will always follow my word. Hallelujah. His power will always follow his word. If you want to get find the power of God and you want to get into the anointing and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost, get into the Word. Amen. Because that's where the power is at. The power doesn't rest in us. It rests in the Word of God and the Spirit that He's placed inside of us. Without the Word, we don't have no power. Amen. Amen. Power always follows the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like that God has given me a word for today, and, and I don't think it's going to take very long. Don't start shouting, Sister Sandra, yet. <laughs> it's not going to take very long to say what God wants me to say today, I don't believe. Um, but it's, I don't think it's a coincidence, Brother Kevin, that God unstopped your ear. Because I believe that God's going to unstop some spiritual ears today. Amen. It's important that God speaks into our life. But sometimes God speaks into our life and we don't hear Him because we become spiritually deaf. There's times when God is speaking to us. And we just don't hear what he's saying because we've gotten distracted by all the noise that is around us. We've gotten distracted by all the thorns of life that the Bible says will choke us out and will cause the word not to have the effect in our life as it's supposed to have. Whenever the, the word talks to us about the parable of the sower, he said that those thorns, that that seed first fell on good ground, but as it began to grow up, that the thorns which represented the cares of life began to choke them out uh, and they began to get distracted and it hindered the word in their life. And I believe that today that God wants to open up some ears that are stopped up spiritually. Perhaps they've not become completely deaf yet, but I believe that God wants to speak to somebody and open those deaf ears and put a word into your heart again. I wonder if I was to ask you today, when was the last time you heard God speak to you? When was the last time that God spoke into your life and you knew without any doubt that God had spoken to you and that you could stand on it because it was the Word of God and it was so clear that you could go to your brother or your sister and say, God said... How long has it been since God has spoken to you? And I'm not asking you to try to conjure up some kind of a, some kind of a fancy saying that might get somebody to move. I'm talking when was the last time that God spoke to you and you heard Him? Do you know what He said? Could you repeat it to someone right now? Or has it been too long that you can't even remember when the last time that He clearly spoke to you? I'm here to tell you that he spoke to me just a moment ago and said, my power always follows my word. If I can't even remember the word that he spoke to me, how can I expect there to be any power in my life? If I can't even remember the last time that he spoke a word into my heart, how can I expect to have an anointing? How can I expect to pray my brother through if I don't even have a word for myself?
In the dream there was a message and I can't remember the details of the message but it got to a point to where the minister was saying let him that has an ear to hear, hear. Let him that has an ear to hear, hear. Let him that has an ear to hear, hear. And I said that is the message. That is what God is trying to declare to his people. I need you to hear my voice again. If you want the power, you're going to have to hear the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, I'm so thankful for the heritage that we have. And I'm thankful to be here on Pentecost Sunday. And when I look at the word, it tells me in Acts that it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which saith, He ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. And in verse 7 of chapter 1 it says, And not for you to know, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in His own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The Word came first. In chapter 1, Jesus gave them a Word. He told them, you need to go and you need to wait because the power is coming. And they received that Word. They was obedient to that Word. And they went and they gathered themselves together in an upper room. And just as certain as I stand here today, I tell you that the Word came first, but the power came rushing in. In chapter 2 it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one cord in one place. And so they had heeded to the Word. They heard the Word that had been given, and they went and they obeyed the Word. They had faith. The Bible says in Hebrews that they wandered around in the wilderness for 40 years and that they never entered into the rest because they heard the word, but it was not mixed with faith. They did not believe. They did not put their trust in God as they should have. And therefore they never entered into the rest that was promised them. But thank God that there were some people on the day of Pentecost uh, that believed the word that Jesus spoke uh, when he said, Go and tarry and wait for me because the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is going to fall upon you and you're going to receive power from on high and you're going to be able to go out uh, and you're going to be able to spread this gospel because you heard a word and received the power. And suddenly, and suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind. He told them to go and to tarry and to wait. But suddenly, the wait was over. There's some of you here that know that you heard a word from God. There's some of you that had your ears open. And you've been waiting, but suddenly the Holy Ghost came in, and like a mighty rushing wind, it made it all right again. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Something tells me they weren't sitting there long. Something tells me that they got excited because the wait was over. Something tells me that the tarrying was over. And I imagine they shouted the rugs till there was runners in the rugs when they went running out that door. And people said, hey, the, the wait is over. Something's happened. These people have done when got drunk. But they didn't realize 
that there was a mighty rushing intoxicating fire from heaven that came and filled that room and the power followed the word Follow the word in Genesis. Whenever he said, let there be light. And there was light. Whenever he said, let the heavens be. And it was. Whenever he said, let there be life. And life came. The power always follows the word. Hallelujah. I believe that God is speaking to some of us here today. Right now he's speaking. And I wonder... If we would harden our hearts and turn away from that voice that God is speaking to us. Or if we would open our hearts and just dare to believe that God really is speaking to you. That He really does love you. That He really does care about your situation. That He wants to fix the broken pieces. That He wants to bring peace back into your life, into your home, and into your marriage. That He wants to... To, to bless you abundantly. That he wants to do those things for you. But it's not going to be found aimlessly wandering around in the dark. It's going to be found when you get into the light of the word. Because that power, when you get into the light of the word, is going to shine down on your situation. And you're going to see things like you haven't seen before. You're going to begin to understand things like you haven't stood before because the power will be upon you and it will be within you and it will be fixing those things that are out of your control that you have no power to fix without the power that's in the word hallelujah hallelujah the bible says in Hebrews that he once spoke to us in Hebrews chapter 1 He said in verse 1, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. There was a time whenever he spoke by the prophets. There was a time where if I wasn't a prophet or if I hadn't been chosen as a man of God, perhaps that I had to depend on somebody else to receive the word. But he says, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. The Bible tells me in John that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And it also tells me that the Word became flesh, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father. When we're talking about the Word, when we're talking about the power, we're talking about the man Jesus that wrapped Himself in flesh. God Himself who came down so that you and I might have a relationship with him. So that we might receive a word for ourselves. That he can speak to us individually. That I don't have to run to a prophet. Or I don't have to run to a priest. But I can hear from God myself. By the one that upholds the, the world with the word. That all things are upheld by the word. The power always follows the word. We are living in a day and time where there are Christians, perhaps so-called Christians, I don't know, I'm not their judge, but they seem to be chasing after only the power. They're not really interested in the word. They're not really interested in and lining up to the Word. They're not really interested in living a holy life and being consecrated and separated from the world. What they're really interested in is coming in and seeing some sensationalism. They're wanting to see somebody get healed. Or they're wanting to see somebody run the aisles. And there's nothing wrong with that stuff. But 
we can't conjure that stuff up on our own. That takes the power of God. And anything less is just an imitation. And it won't do you no good at all. We have to have the power of the Word of God working in our lives if we're going to be effective in our ministry. Hallelujah. Give me a moment before you judge what I say. But I'm not looking for a miraculous ministry. I'm not looking for a prophetic ministry. I'm not looking for a healing ministry. I'm looking for a Jesus ministry. I'm looking for a one God, Jesus, right now, word ministry that I can stand upon because I know that if I have a Jesus ministry, I know that if I have a word ministry, that I'll have a powerful ministry. The healing will come. The miracles will come. The Bible says these signs shall follow those people who believe upon the word. We don't have to chase signs, miracles, and wonders. They'll follow us because they always follow the word. Hallelujah. It's interesting in Hebrews 2 that he says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. He says we have got to pay attention and we've got to take the word seriously. We've got to take our Jesus seriously. We have to take it seriously unless it would slip somehow. Unless somehow we would become distracted. Unless somehow we find that the word was, was thrown on the, on, on the sidelines uh, or that the birds came and, and stole it away or, or that the thorns came up and choked it out. I want to make sure that that word is planted in my heart uh, and that that word is going to come forth and bring forth a harvest. Uh, perhaps it won't bring forth a hundredfold in my life. Perhaps it won't bring forth the ninety. But i got to know that it's going to bring forth all that it can. i got to know that I'm going to be operating to the full potential that God designed me for. God doesn't always speak to us all the same way. You might say, well, I haven't heard God speak to me in an audible voice. I think by and far the best way that you can get the Word in your life is the written Word. You can't go wrong with the written Word. You can't, you can't go wrong with it whenever it speaks into your life. How can it? The Bible says that He will lead us and guide us into all righteousness. How can we be led and how can we be guided if we don't read the Word? We'll leave ourselves open to too much air if we just say, man, I am so holy that everything that I need to know, God's going to speak to me and I'm never going to miss it. Man, I'm 100% I'm with God. If I say, you've got to know it's right. Man, I'm going to run from you. I'm going to get back because I'm looking for lightning because man's fallible. And man makes mistakes. And there's times whenever I just knew what I knew until I realized I didn't know nothing. There's times whenever I was just sure until I realized I wasn't sure at all. But whenever I'm in the Word, God's Word does not change. Can you imagine living for a God where the Word was always changing? Can you imagine not being able to determine whether or not it was going to be the same yesterday, today, and forever? What's this month's rules? What's next month's rules? You don't have to worry about a God that's changing. You don't have to worry about no variance with Him. What was yesterday is today and will be tomorrow. You can stand on the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Right. And so he says, For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast in every transgression 
and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard Him? He said at first it was spoken by the Lord. If you're going to receive the word, you're going to have to hear when he speaks. And he says, and it was confirmed to us by those that heard him. In order for me to go out and make a difference in my brother's life, in order for me to go out and make a difference in that lost person's life, I'm going to have to be able to take to them a word that I heard from God, not my opinion. I'm going to have to be able to deliver the word. And how can they know that the word that I'm speaking is real? How can they know that the word that I'm delivering is genuine? Because the power always follows the word. And if God has spoken something into you, then I would have to encourage you to continue reading. It says in verse 4, God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles, and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. The power always follows the Word. And you can rest assured that if God told you He'll do it, then He'll do it. Don't second guess Him. Don't doubt Him. Move on it. If He tells you to lay hands on somebody, what are you waiting for? If God tells you to place somebody through or witness to somebody, don't wait. Go do it now because God has spoken to you and He will confirm His Word with power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm closing. I told you it wasn't going to be very long. 16 minutes, sister. That's a record or something. Right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 In Luke, Jesus sent out the 70 to go out and to preach that the kingdom had come. In other words, he sent them out to preach him. Go out and preach Jesus. Go out and preach and tell them that I'm coming. That I'm not far behind you. Go and tell them that not far behind this word that's coming is power. Not far behind you is power. And I'm going to change their lives. And their names are going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And things are about to change dramatically in their lives. Go out there. And the ones that have an ear to hear, let them hear. And the ones that don't, you go back and read it. And you hear what he said about the ones that wouldn't receive it. He said, go and tell them I'm coming. And they came back and he gave them power to heal and when they came back, they said, they was all excited and they said, Jesus, even the devils was subject to the power of thy name. And he looked at them and he says, don't be so surprised that I have power over the devils. Where have you been? Have you not been paying attention? Just back track just a little bit and look at what all's been going on. I've been healing the sick. I've been opening the blinded eyes. I've been opening the deaf ears. I've been casting the legions out and they have subject to me. They even asked permission after I cast them out on where to go. They stood there and waited for me to give them direction on what to do next. Do you think that it's a big surprise that they are subject to my name? That when I go out there and you speak in my authority that I've given to you that those devils are going to stand their attention and say, what do we do now? They have no choice but to listen to you. Let me tell you what you need to rejoice about. Let me tell you what you need to get excited about. You need to get excited that your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, miracles and signs and wonders will always follow the Word. Seek nothing will. If the blood of Christ 
assured that the power will always follow the word. It's just a natural consequence of doing the right thing. God is speaking to somebody today. He wants to open some deaf ears. Quit looking for all the other things. Quit looking for all the excitement. It'll come. It's not far behind. Just take the word that he's speaking into your life and get a hold of it. Get a hold of that word. Whether it comes out of the book or whether it comes as a whisper like it did for Elijah. Hopefully it doesn't have to come from a donkey like it did Balaam. I always wonder when I read about that, what exactly was going on in Balaam's mind when he began to have a conversation with a donkey? You would have thought that that would have been enough right there when that donkey looked at him and said, why are you whooping me? What did I do to you? And he answered him. Right then and there, I think that I would have had to stop and say, whoa, something ain't right here. God's trying to speak to me. I wonder if there's something in your life that's so obvious that's trying to speak to you that you ought to come to a halt and say, yes, Lord, I will listen. I know I've been stubborn. I know that I've not been listening just like I should have been. I know you've been trying to get my attention, but please don't harden my heart. Please don't send plagues upon me like you did Pharaoh. Please, I know, God, that if you really want to, you can shake my world and get my attention. But I wish that somebody today would just listen to that still small voice that God's speaking to you right now and trying to place a word into your life that you can walk out these doors and you can say, I've been to church on Pentecost Sunday and God spoke to me. God spoke a word to me. If God hasn't spoke a word to you, He's trying to. He wants to. Don't leave here with a stopped up spiritual ear. Hit these altars as fast as you can. Worship and praise Him until you break through. But don't leave this building until you heard what God's trying to speak to you. Because I assure you today that God wants to speak into your life. And the power is not far behind.